Hey folks, what do Euclid, Saga Synth, and Audio Kits Tonic Package all have in common? What is they were all brought to life with the help of Jem OK? Well, not that Euclid, but this Euclid. Today we'll demo Jem's latest app, Binorhythmic, discuss why I really love his approach to app development, and finally unlock the mysteries of AUV3 sequencing. Let's get started. So first up, this is Binorhythmic. It's an AUV3 MIDI sequencer that uses binary counting to toggle MIDI notes on and off. It's the kind of app that works great for accompaniment and creating happy accidents. Inside of AUM, I have Saga Synth and Overdrive Synth being controlled by two instances of Binorhythmic, and King of FM is being played on the keyboard. As always, I'll have links to everything in the description. <laughs> And here's another tune I'm making by changing between patterns. That's Binorhythmic, and if the icon looks familiar, that's because Jim has created a collection, nay, an army of AUV3 MIDI apps that share similar branding. And this is where I think developers should take particular note. Where Jim's apps excel is that each of them do one thing very well, they're in a niche, they share resources, and each one has a unique hook. Take TextQuencer, for example, an app that uses text as a MIDI sequencer, or MIDI Motion, an app that uses Apple Watch for MIDI CC control. The only instrument app he's released so far is Euclid Goes to Party, and come on, that app icon, it is legendary. Also notice that these apps are not free. Most of them are around five or six dollars. I want to release apps like this. I think it's a great model for any developer. It enables a solo dev to do more than just create one app a year. Sometimes I'll spend weeks tweaking one element and if I just created like a styled knob and used it everywhere, that would be a huge time saver. Think of it like a musician. You could get a great kick and snare sample and use it on every song or you could create new samples for every single song. Somewhere in there, there's a balance between keeping things fresh and just using what ain't broke. As he's working on his own projects, Jim's also a big contributor to the iOS open source community. The scales and tonic come straight from his music theory project. Also his expertise in MIDI sequencing helped to bring the sequencer and Saga Synth and King of FM to life. Speaking of segues, recently on Twitter, Vortex of Mobile Music Pro asked, if you had five to $10,000 to invest in your music career, but you only had seven days to use it, how would you spend it? Well, for me, I'd hire musicians to record sound samples, a UI designer to make some nice looking knobs, and a coder to program the tricky bits like AUV3 MIDI sequencing. Then, light bulb. I could hire Jim to make an arpeggiator for my next app. Fast forward a few weeks later and we had a Zoom call set up to start working. I described the project with a lot of words and not very many pauses, and then Jim gave me the one line of code that changed everything. Well then another hundred lines that I'd need to write myself, but the sequencing part was dead simple to get started. And now I'm gonna show you what he showed me. Okay, if you're new to audio development, then this is jumping right into the deep end. I just wanna talk about this one little piece of the puzzle because it's the domino that knocks over all the other dominoes for MIDI sequencing. This is for AUV3 instruments, but I'm sure the same applies for AUV3 MIDI. In the internal render block of your audio unit, you can get the musical context block that reports back the host's current beat. 
When a new beat is hit, we call the next tick of our sequencer or arpeggiator or whatever, you have to handle that method. When the host application isn't playing, the sequencer won't run. So in that case, some people use a timer instead, or you can just have an alert show up telling the user to hit the play button in the DAW. Now this is only needed in AUV3. In the standalone version of your app, Gem recommends using Ableton Link, but you could also use Apple Sequencer or a timer. The trick is getting those things to work inside of AUV3, since the Apple Sequencer needs background audio enabled, which isn't currently possible in the AUV3 context. I'll link to two other projects that handle MIDI sequencing, one that just came out today actually from the developer of Polybeat. These no doubt will go into much more detail than what I described, but to just get started, to just put some code out there and have it be working, it's that one line. And that's it. Thank you, Jim, for the open source work that you do and that one line of magical code. Check out his apps if you're into MIDI sequencing. And if you like this video, you might also enjoy this one where I made a sequencer with audio kit and 100 lines of code. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.